Hey guys, this video is going to be a comparison of my brand new refreshed 2021 Tesla Model S Long Range and my 2015 Model S 90D. There's a lot to cover here, so let's open them up, start from the back, and work our way forward. This Model S is equipped with an option that is no longer available, and that is a rear-facing third row seat for children up to 77 pounds, making this Model S a seven-seater. Over here on the left side is an unpartitioned hole where stuff will fall in and be missing for five years. This car has a power liftback, which, believe it or not, was actually a premium option on the early Model S's. So the first thing I noticed when looking at the hatchback of the new Model S is just how much more refined it is compared to the old one. The rear deck cover is upholstered in some suede-like material, which feels great. It has magnetic anchors, and it folds flat. Unlike the last one, which would bounce up and down in your rear view if you forgot to fold it back. The Model S now has electronic releases for the rear seats. So if, you want, if you're standing in the back of the car loading up something big, you can actually release the seats without having to lean all the way forward. And of course the buttons on the back of the seats are still there. They're now electronic instead of mechanical levers. And then there's the release for the center seat to turn into a center console. The bottomless hole is now a finished pocket. So stuff that goes in there actually stays there and won't roll underneath the trunk floor. The inside of the lift bag is now upholstered in that suede-like material, unlike the 2015's plastic trim. The old back seat is pretty basic. You get three across, no center console. Seat bottoms are pretty flat. With little kids, uh, getting their child seats in here was actually kind of a pain. The seat anchors are at awkward positions. So very few seats actually work in this car. We made it work and we had it for five years. Our kids grew up in it, but the 2021 is completely new. So like the Model 3 and Y, you've got push button door releases. There's actually a door pocket, finally. Uh-oh, I see some juice on the seat bottom there. Well, the nice thing about the being leather is that it cleans up very easily. So there's the seat anchor. It's in a new position that actually is better for kids' seats. The kids have their own screen back here now with controls, so they can adjust their own air conditioning, skip songs to my playlist that they don't like, and watch Netflix and YouTube on long trips. The center seat folds down into a center console, complete with two cup holders and inductive charging for devices. So if you have people back here that want to charge their iPhone or Android, they can just drop it onto that pad and there it goes. To elaborate some more on the kid seat issue I mentioned earlier, in the other Model S, when this same booster seat was installed, the seat rail would be covering the seat belt buckle for this seating position. So when the kid sitting here had to buckle himself in, he would have to use the center buckle. As you can see here, it's been resolved in the refresh, and everybody's happy. Here's the old front. As I mentioned previously, the door only has a little storage space there that doubles as the handle. The seats themselves, back in 2015, these were considered the new seats, called the next gen. The center console has a split sliding armrest and open storage on the floor. You get a steering wheel with three stocks, the gear selector, turn signal and cruise control slash autopilot and the little nub in between there for uh, setting the steering wheel position. 
opening up the front, you immediately realize that there's nothing in common with the last Model S. So the door is completely new. The seats are new. They are now perforated with heating and cooling. Previously it was heating only. Obviously you've got a yoke instead of a steering wheel and no stocks coming off the steering column. The center console was actually flushed out compared to the old one. Now that we're at the front, let's compare frunks. So here's the old frunk. It looks like it has more storage space than it actually does because the outline is a carryover from the earlier Model S that had a single rear motor allowing more storage up front. So when the dual motor became a thing, they had to shrink the front space to accommodate it. The new one looks smaller, but it's also not trying to look like something it's not. This is a little interesting. The underside of the new hood is unfinished. While the stripping is on the front tub itself. On the other car, the underside of the hood has plastic trim and additional weather stripping. The new car has the latest version of autopilot, which has cameras in the B pillar and cameras in the side marker lights. The side marker on this car bulges out quite a bit more than the other one with no camera. The refresh includes a new bumper design. This car has a front nose cone, which was discontinued in 2016, I believe, in favor of this look with the, with the buck tooth in the center. The lower bumper is the biggest change, taking design cues from the Model 3 and Y. All of the exterior trim pieces, minus the front and rear Tesla emblems, are blacked out, as opposed to being chromed, like on the old car over there. It's like Tesla caught on to the trend of doing chrome deletes and just made it a standard thing. So the wheels on both of these cars are what Tesla refers to as the arachnid design. They're 21s, um, but they're actually different. The ones on this car are the original arachnids, which were initially offered as an exclusive referral prize to owners who, I think, preferred three to five sales. They're a staggered setup, so in the back we have two 65s. And then up front we have two 45s, just a little skinnier. Notice how big this wheel looks compared to the one on the new car. They're both 21s, same general design, but this one has a fat lip uh, for aerodynamic benefits. The tires are Michelin Pilot Sport. 4S and the front tires are 265s. So the tires on the front of this car are the same size as the tires on the back of the other one. And on the back we have 295s. The same setup is used on the Model S Plaid. One thing that is completely new in this Model S is active noise cancellation. So being in this car is like sitting between a pair of noise cancelling headphones. And then I noticed the other day that the glass felt different between the cars. So I measured both cars, determined that the new Model S has approximately 20% thicker glass. Which I'm assuming is there to further reduce highway noise. And with that, I would say that's enough differences to cover in one video. So thanks for watching.